Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio, another SolidWorks video. Recently purchased an Arlo Essential Spotlight Camera um, for, for use outside our house. Um, and when I received the product, saw the, uh, oh, there goes the uh, motion alert now actually. Anyway, um, that's the cat. Um, when I unboxed the product, I thought, oh yeah, I've seen the external form, saw pictures of it online what have you, um, I had in my head it would be fairly, you know, a fair idea of what the form would be, and then I unboxed it and it had the dreaded um, Tangent Terminator um, G1 issue on it, so I've remodelled it, I mean you can see there what I mean, and now I'm going to swap over into um, put some photos so over here in Photoshop, you can see, took some photos, um, you can see where the surface comes around, and then there's a tangent connection here. It's quite obvious. Um, now it's sort of a lozenge form from a end elevation with a rounded end. And I mean that that tangent termination is quite obvious. Um, so I thought, hey, why don't we re why don't I review product and say, actually, I would have modelled it slightly differently, um, so I didn't end up with this product uh, this issue. So you imagine if you you had a product out there, um, I don't know, hundred thousand units or something or more, and um, it had. You know, something like this. Consumers probably won't notice it, but it's still lurking out there. I've had a product that I worked on that um, there's lots and lots of them out there, and there's bits and pieces that I'm not happy with, but you know, yeah, little things like this uh, that can be easily fixed. Um, okay, so I'm not reviewing this product per se. I think the product's really good and the system's really well thought out. Um, seems to be working really well so far. So I've got nothing negative to say about the system or anything like this. It's just I'm just going to look at another way that they could have modelled um, modelled this product so you didn't end up with this uh, tangent terminator sort of thing happening, where the surface stops curving and transitions. Okay, so I took some dimensions and drawbacks from a model. I uh, took some dimensions off the product and recreated it. So the back surface basically flat uh, where, the, where the mount hole is and then there's some crowning on the sides. So I revolved the rear surface and created a Plan control and front section sketch, and then lofted through and um, knitted everything together, created uh, center surfaces, and then thickened it and mirrored everything over, like so. And I put a little uh, a little cut in here to represent the part line. Now there is a, a tool split along the top and bottom which you can feel. I'm guessing they have just run the, um, there's no draft, it just runs down to zero degrees uh, being a curved face and it's highly polished, really highly polished. Um, so I didn't bother putting any draft down there. Um, and again this rear housing here, it's probably the line of drawers this way so it looks in here. So again, zero degrees draft. Um, so if I turn on the zebra stripes, you can really see. Now I'm not I'm not concerned with the um, the continuity from the front housing to the rear housing because um, of draft that comes down to zero. It's it's this whole issue here. We can see the um, tangent connection between the surfaces. Okay, so I quickly put together another model, which I'll swap over to here, um, which basically is the same 
same model. Um, so those are the, these are the same surfaces that I create in another model. Uh, and then I've gone through and I'm going to trim out a section through here. I'll turn on the zebra stripes. You can see the uh, tangent connection there. I'm going to trim that area out and um, blend between the surfaces. So what I've done is I've I've going to I've, I've created a sketch on the end here uh, with some dimensions that I've used to drive a degree five style spline on the end here, and probably wondering why I've I haven't made uh, just the spline. Um, curved continuous to this edge rather than creating the sketch first and and then in the sketch of of um, added dimensions like how far I want to set back from this line here it's because in SOLIDWORKS if you try and convert an entity and then drag that entity back and dimension it like to this point and then also make something curved continuous off it as soon as you go and change this dimension here everything gets over defined um, for whatever reason, it's a real pain. Uh, so I've, that's why I've created this sketch first. Um, so there's a bit of double handling, so you have to go back and and um, alter this, alter this dimension um, separately to the to the spline. And another thing, why this is biased, like it's not equally spaced off this line, uh, it's because this is straight. And this is a curve here, so if, if we had them both same distance, these these points it gets quite flat. So to get a nice, um, really um, smooth uh, transition between, that's why I've biased it. So higher on the uh, curve face here, curve side. So you can see the material I'm going to lose that just that little bit of material there um, before it connects back up into the revolved arc here and the straight here okay so now i have done the same thing down the front but because the front of the product if i look from the front front view is lower um this control sketch here for the front spline is a bit lower at the front and accordingly these are uh, the dimensions between the CVs are slightly less than the spline at the back. And then once I've done that, I have created a, um, a sketch on the center line, which I'm going to use to trim out this area. So the sketch is matches up with um, the spline on this end. And the spline here, it's got a horizontal constraint. And in this sketch, the first section here where it traverses the revolve is uh, horizontal and then it's um, a degree two style spline with three CVs. Um, horizontal constraint on the first um, section of the control polygon uh, in equal length. Uh, so you can see that moves to um, the match the start and end of the spline. Okay. And then that trims <coughs> excuse me, that trims out that section. And then I've revolved the spline on this end through 90 degrees. Knitted the bodies together and then created a boundary surface here. And the boundary surface has two 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 um two inputs on each direction. And I've got 100% tangent influence on the long side boundaries. And this boundary here is tangent, um, but don't need tangent influence on that because assuming that's a split line there with draft, well not draft, but down to zero degrees, we don't need curvature continuous across here. Okay, and knit that together. So if I turn on my zebra stripes, so you can still see I've got a tangent connection here, but that's where the two housings, housings are meeting. Um, 
that's not the issue I was trying to alleviate. I was trying to get rid of the tangent, um, hard sort of tangent transition along here. So that looks quite a lot better. So I'm just going to mirror that all over. So I've solidified that, added the chamfer to the front, uh, added a little cut sweep here, and mirrored the bodies over. Okay, if I turn the lines off, edges, right, so you can see it's quite a lot uh, smoother as the transition, you know, you don't sort of read it as curved surface, flat surface, curved surface anymore. Um, even on the back here. So if I bring up a good assembly here with the two, um, you know, there's the original there. It sort of looks like curved surface, flat surface, curved surface. Well, I know this isn't, it's not flat. It's, it's curved in this direction, but um, you can really read those, those edges. Especially around the back of the product here. If you have one of these in the flesh, it's quite obvious. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe the maybe the designer or whatever wanted it to look that way. Um, personally, if it was me doing it and it's such a simple form, I'd I'd prefer it was like this, not like this. Anyway, um, hope that was a useful review. Very late here, that's why I'm sounding a bit tired. I uh, just wanted to get this out and done. Long weekend and sort of struggle to find time to do these things sometimes. Yep, thanks very much. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.